Welcome to SME's Additive Manufacturing Influencer Series, dedicated to the passionate professionals who volunteer with SME to connect the digital thread of additive manufacturing within traditional manufacturing. My name is Adam Penna, your host, leading customer engagement for our SME Additive Manufacturing community. My guest today is Mara Hittner. Mara is Vice President of Strategic Partnerships at Matter Hackers. And Matter Hackers is the largest desktop 3D printing and digital fabrication retailer in the world. With a showroom in Orange County that has 70 plus 3D printer models and over 2,000 3D printing materials. Fundamentally, helping hobbyist schools and small business corporations starting or staying current with 3D printing. Mara is also an ambassador for America Makes, as well as an advisor to the Women in 3D Printing Youth Programs. So, Mara, welcome. Hi, Adam. So great to see you. Yeah, yeah. Good to be here, and uh, I appreciate your patience. I know we've been working on getting this together, so good to be here with you, and it's be great to talk about additive manufacturing today. So, welcome. Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person very, very soon at Rapid. Yeah, yeah, we have Rapid coming up, and it's funny, we'll also have the beginning of next year in May, there'll be another Rapid, so uh, kind of real close to back-to-back -back September to May there, and uh, looking forward to both experiences, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's good to be up against that to see some people in person and, and enjoy that. So looking yeah, forward we got to more it. than that. We got, I mean, here in Southern California, we got West Tech, we got Aerodef, oh. we got all sorts of stuff. There you go. Yeah, name them, call them out. There's a lot of great uh, in-person events coming up and uh, love to have that experience. So looking forward to it. I know we were talking a bit about experience inside of additive manufacturing and we all have our first experiences. What was your first experience with additive manufacturing like? Oh my goodness. Well, I think one main difference between myself and a number of the people that you've been working with has been that I'm kind of like, I love the major additive manufacturing, the, the metal machines and the, um, the software and the, you know, ceramics and all the big technology with matter hackers, we sell the desktop 3d printers and the materials that go with those desktop 3d printers. So that's what I get really excited about those accessible kind of budget friendly 3d printers and materials. And that's, that's what I started with. I actually still have uh, right behind me. Nice. Uh, that is Johnny Fives. That is my Johnny um, Five. It's uh, still alive. Not... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He is, as a matter of fact, still kicking. Um, so cool. Nice. Yeah. Well, so my a picture of, of Dave Grohl right next to the printer, or is that somebody else? Oh, yeah. oh it's no, that's not somebody else. Oh, it is Dave, Grohl. Dave that... Grohl. How cool oh, yeah. is that? And then I've got Snoop. I got Snoop. Chilling oh, wow. down there. Yeah. Wow. Snoop Dogg in the house. All right. Okay. All, all along yeah. with Johnny Five. That's beautiful. Cool. I take things very, very seriously here. Um, very, very professional. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, uh, Got to have it. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny because there's so many, like I'm a, I'm a musician. Most people that know me know this. Um, and there's so many musicians in the AM community so many creative people i think we all just kind of have that background in common but yeah so my background is not computers or design or manufacturing or anything like that i saw 3d printing on a tv show back in i think 2013 or 2014. oh cool i just got fascinated by it i'm like there's there's just something something about it just like sparked my curiosity and uh, sort of went down the very limited rabbit hole at that time in 2014, trying to find out like, what is this 3D printing? And I actually discovered there was a trade show that was gonna be in Seattle. I'm in Southern California. And I was also kind of looking for a new career at that point. I had been working in uh, sales and advertising. And I uh, started reading about 3D printing and it just like, it never occurred to me that people made things. Like ah. it never occurred to me that like, that like this was a prototype first or first was an idea and then it was a prototype and then it was iterated and then like, then mass produced. It just, it just, it just never occurred to me. The process. So itself. when yeah. I, yeah. So when I started reading about desktop 3d printing, I'm like, wait a minute, you can not only do people make stuff, but like I, I can make stuff. Like I can just, if I have an idea, I can just make a thing. And so I got a little bit obsessed. So I went to this um, trade show in uh, 3D, 3D printer world or something like that in Seattle. And that is where I met um, Matter Hackers mm. and saw that they sold 3D printers and materials and software. So it was a place that I could really learn. 
bought my 3D printer from them, mostly because I was interested in it, but you know, also probably just to get a little attention. So maybe they would hire me and they did. <laughs> and uh, that was six years, six and a half years ago that I've been working here and the company has grown, the, the uh, industry has grown. Uh, it's just been really, really inspiring. And honestly, that like creativity that, that got me into the industry is still what drives my, my passion for it today, for sure. Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting you bring up uh, the creativity side of it because that's that's the whole part like you're talking about. It's a big part of the community, the AM community, a lot of creatives out there and and then pushing forward into, you know, production and actually seeing, you know, what happens in the the large scale uh, um, manufacturing world is is a trip. You know, those creatives can do so many new things inside of the process like we're talking about. That's different building layer by layer. It opens up different opportunities. So you think of it as like I've heard it a million times, but a tool and a new tool in the tool shed you know something like that to do a different type of, of manufacturing so um really need to see that the creative side and the the manufacturing side come together and kind of come up with new and different ways of uh addressing situations out there so really yeah. Yeah. And des desktop 3d printers are such an exciting space honestly um i'm just like i'm all fired up because like it's been a minute since i've done uh like uh, online interviews or presentations but i did one yesterday for penn state nice. and so oh, cool. like went through yeah they're pro for their um their additive program um oh, which wow, is wonderful wonderful fantastic. great program yeah i did like an update on you know desktop 3d printers and materials and just like what's new and so i went and like refreshed a bunch of the like client stories and videos that i usually share and i mean there's just, i just get i just get re-inspired every time when i see people using 3d printing for so many things because like like the bio printing and the metal printing and the houses and you know all that big stuff that's really awesome and desktop is also used for the prototyping and the development and stuff for all of those things so there's just i mean the future is so bright and like you were saying it's kind of a new tool in the toolbox and the fact that there are now so many tools when you talk about additive it can mean so many things and it's just really exciting to be part of the full community, but then especially with desktop where like everybody, it, we kind of touch a little bit of everything. You get to mm. learn a little bit about all the different uh, uses for additive. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. There are so many different uses out there and so many different stages you can be in from the prototype stage to the production stage. And there's an evolution happening on the software side and the machines on the way we approach things and the education out there. They're talking about Penn State, you know, with their additive manufacturing program. So many different education programs are coming up and people are actually going through school. I know my daughter, I mentioned this a lot, but she had a 3D printer in her first grade class. So to me, that just is, you know, wow, what's the future going to look like? So, well, that's a good question. How do you see AM evolving over the next, you know, few years? Oh, man. I mean, I can, if we can like stick, stick on, uh, you know, education for a minute and workforce sure. development. That's one of the things like I love, you know, tooling you and, you know, all of the programs, the certifications that SME has to offer. Those are all fantastic places to start. Uh, Penn State has a great program. There are a number of universities that have really great programs. We work yes. with Chapman University. We work with um, a lot of community colleges also, which is awesome because that's really getting to making this education accessible and making right. these certifications accessible. One of my favorite stories right now is Somerset Community College in uh, Kentucky. And they are actually, they've got these like tricked out $600 3D printers that they're printing um, the BASF 316L metal material. Oh, wow. It's actually yeah. what my what my ring. Oh, is neat. Here. <laughs> nice. Yeah. This is, yeah, it's stainless. It's 316L, um, and it can pre it can be printed on any desktop 3D printer that's got like a you know hardened steel nozzle or a ruby nozzle. So they've tricked out these very inexpensive 3D printers, and they're actually teaching a certificate program in AM specifically for wel uh, welders and machinists wow yep to start bringing am into their more into the more traditional manufacturing l3 harris is doing the same thing they're using the 316l to print parts and then weld them and machine them for like jigs and fixtures and tools we're going to have all of these parts in our rapid booth at matter hackers booth awesome. rapid yeah. so this is their top of mind 
Captain Brad Baker over at um, uh, the U.S. The Navy Academy has a fantastic AM program where he just keeps pushing the boundaries and such a great supporter of, um, of additive manufacturing companies and technology. So, you know, the, I think the, the future of AM is just, it's already sort of everywhere, but it's becoming the education is becoming more accessible. So we're going to be able to have people that are, are trained to hire more people to really push the technology in the directions that it that it needs to go in the future, whether that's food, supply chain, you know, space, all, all, all of it. All of it. You know, it, it's happening and that's what makes it so exciting. But wow, I, I could feel your passion when you're talking through the education side of it. And I know you do a lot with the educational side of it. So uh, it's interesting to see those programs grow and those minds grow and those people get involved inside of uh, the community. And yeah, it's, it's everything, like we said, from the makers to the production side of it, uh, the polymers, the metals, the softwares, the the post-processing, you know, the CAD, the the engineering, the the creativity, all of it just mixed together. And what what happens is you have our community, right? So the AMM community is is pretty large and it's it's different, you know, like we said, uh, going from the uh, the makers to the to the manufacturers, you know, and um, so what do you think defines like the AM community? What would you say defines the additive manufacturing community? Community is a great word. That's definitely, you know, what we found, especially through the pandemic, you know, everybody making face shields and everything, just pulling together, you know, no matter what your technology is, no matter what your affiliation is, no matter where you're getting your money, who your clients are, the crossovers, like the community really has a common goal and I think that we all sort of understand that it's too big for one company to own. Mm. You need to, like we 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 use the uh, the phrase bear hugging the community. Like, you know, Matter Hackers can do a lot of stuff, but what we're really great at is filling gaps. Like there's a lot of other companies, partners that we work with. Um, you know, we're mostly a reseller, for example, um, you know, Ultimaker, MakerBot, uh, Race 3D, Creality, you know, all the all the things. And we found that there was a gap in the market for a like under a thousand dollar desktop 3D printer that was able to print composites like nylon with carbon fiber, nylon with metal. Um, so we developed the you know the Pulse, which is one of the many printers that we sell. But like I think that's community and um, resilience are probably also is also another word uh. that I would use to describe the the additive manufacturing community because everybody's just always ready for the pivot mm. i think probably because the technology is developed for the pivot you know like right. where it's it's literally made to change quickly and iterate quickly and be open source you know coming from that sort of open source foundation i think also really fosters that sense of community that sense of openness that sense of not just sharing, but like collaborating, mm, yeah. you know, like really no kidding. None of us, this is too big. None of us are going to do this alone. So how can we work together, small things and big things to develop the industry more? And I think that also goes for the client side as well. You know, we, one of the things that I see a lot of matter hackers is because we work with schools and businesses, and military those three don't typically talk to each other uh, and yet yeah. true teachers all they want to do is train students for the jobs of the future and all the uh corporations want to do is have you know a really talented uh pool of applicants so like we we try and facilitate those conversations um and then, you know, with the government and the military as well, bringing on AM in a really, really meaningful ways and so open to working with small businesses. It's just been, and you know, America Makes, of course, is a great um, facilitator for those conversations as well. So again, you know, if you, if you start to think about it, it's just, it's too big, it's too much. So you just need everybody. Yeah, you do. And I guess that's the definition of a community, being able to have someone there that, that helps in things that you don't kind of know how to do. So you have a resource to go to. And, um, you know, that's that's what builds the community, everybody having their own special talent they bring into it and able to help the other person that, that might not know where to go the next time and, and pass on that, that tribal knowledge that we have. 
but yes. yeah, it's uh, it, it is. It's a beautiful thing right now to see that, especially as we've seen over the pandemic with things going more digital and virtual. But uh, we all have that need to be in, in person and, and uh, as a community, both of them are important. So uh, it's good to see both sides of those growing right now. Yeah, yeah. I think I've met more people uh, through the pandemic. I mean, pandemic was terrible. I wish it never happened. Yes, yes. And silver linings. Um, I think I virtually connected with more people in this community than ever before, especially with women in 3D printing, um, with America Makes, with our clients, with, I mean, just so, so many organizations, uh, maker spaces and um, just small, small and large that are just really working so hard and so passionate about making an impact. And, you know, I'm very glad, you know, with Rapid coming up and, you know, with the other kind of um, programs that SME is starting to do in person, like you're, you're doing the virtual and then also doing the in person. Right. I think that's going to be, you know, when we talk about the new norm, like I, I, I hope that that continues because we've been able to connect with people from other countries, people that, you know, maybe their company is, you know, super small and has amazing tech and ideas, but just doesn't have the budget to fly everybody all over the country. Sure. You know, so it's really great. Yeah, different circumstances need different solutions. And uh, yeah, we're all opening up to uh, what those different solutions can be, you know, <laughs> uh, or most of us. I mean, you got, that's the thing. It's like uh, being, you said, like agile, being nimble, being able to change. We've seen a lot of, uh, even in the supply chain, right? Talking about, you know, what happened in the pandemic, the supply chain had to change a lot, a lot of ways, especially in the medical and health industry. And we saw a lot of 3D printing solutions happen there, come from the creatives inside of the maker world, and then come into actual you know practices that are put in place uh you know by the cdc and everything else that that kind of can say okay this is an actual way we should be doing this to change it and be nimble enough and to happen you know it's it's something that you don't see uh, inside of a quick process that's it's more attributed to that than 3d printing or additive manufacturing so um great to see that kind of come into uh, fruition during that time yeah but yeah, I think we talked a bit about your advice to any manufacturers out there that are looking to adopt AM. Do, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Because I know that's a big topic. Listen to your more innovative employees ah. who might be watching Joel telling videos or might be watching, you know, YouTube, you know, seeing ideas on YouTube about how to use even even these like couple hundred bucks 3d printers and yes buy the you know ten thousand dollar ultimakers or whatever you know like buy all the things and just start just find someone in your organization or hire somebody in your organization that's got some weird ass ideas yeah. about how to do things differently and just just try it out even if it's just a little couple hundred bucks you know printer and you're just making little plastic things like I've seen some, you know, things for automotive, you know, on the, uh, the, the production line for automotive industry, for example, of like jigs and fixtures and real solves for problems that are like 20 cents worth of PLA. Right. Oh, that's, that's what really, uh, you know, that's, I that's mean, it right there. Yeah. And then, you know, and, and just start and then, you know, be open to everything else that's out there my 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 biggest advice is like don't start with peak ah. maybe, maybe start with you know P yeah. or pet g you know like um materials are a little bit uh touchy especially when you get into those high temp materials so yeah stay away yeah from like that, work that, your way up to it first. nylon is yeah nylon is awesome pet g is also you know very very strong and a lot easier to print like like get some get some start somewhere get some wins under your belt have a um an advocate within your company but then also reach out to a partner like matter hackers that's completely agnostic and is just really interested in your success yeah. um partners I think are that's important. that's the bit that's some really great feedback that i've gotten from our clients is that they appreciate that that we are there to kind of guide them to you know which because we're completely agnostic you know which materials are going to work for their for their use case, which machine do they really need? You know, maybe they, maybe it's better to get five, you know, if you've got a budget, maybe it's better for you to get five less expensive machines instead of one machine for your whole budget, because you need more production capacity versus, 
you know, bells and whistles that maybe you don't really need. And then you grow into it. Yeah. That business so, case yeah, my, right there that if you can help get help finding your business case, <laughs> that's really yeah. the ticket right there. That's, that's great to have that support. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. My advice is start and find somebody either internally or externally that can kind of guide you to, to being successful. Yeah, it's great advice. That is great advice. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. As we know, we talked a little bit about Rapid Plus TCT coming up and also uh, going to be next May in 2022. What is your, uh, what, what do you see like with Society of Manufacturing Engineers, SME, uh, their role? What do, you, what do you see like the, the role that SME plays inside of additive manufacturing? I mean, you're, it's, it's a, uh, a gatherer of people, right? Connector of people, providing, providing opportunities for people to get together virtually or in person to discuss these things and, you know, really kind of um, providing those platforms um, and those opportunities for conversation and for introductions of these, of the community, you know, bringing the community together. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big part of it. We're all we're always uh, focusing on community. The more we could do um, to kind of support that inside of the manufacturing world, uh, the better. And I love to see the focus on additive manufacturing right now. It's a uh, there's a lot happening, and as we both know, we're both excited in different ways of, and the same ways about so many things going on right now. Um, it's a, a good focus, a positive focus inside of uh, our world and inside of manufacturing as a whole. I love to see what happens in 3D printing. It keeps it exciting. Uh, the more people I talk to, the more I get a different side of the story. And it just, uh, to me, it's really interesting. Uh, you know, it's about building a better world for all of us. That's the way I see it. You know, um, just trying to help people out, communicate, see how we can make things better and uh, communicate better as a, a world together with these uh, these different ways yeah. of doing things and approaching uh, solutions. You know, that's that's what's cool about it. Yeah. I love to see that. Yeah, I think um, the other thing that I'm seeing a lot of that's great is the a little bit of more of a diversification in the supply chain sure. um, for additive. So you know, there's there's definitely a, a need and a call for, and I think we're starting to answer it for more American-made printers. You know, like we've got Pulse, Ultimaker, you know, Lulzbot. Like there's some really good, solid American-made desktop printers, and also materials like. You know, I've, I've mentioned to you, I recently went to this military trade show where I connected with a client of ours that like during the pandemic, he, he was very grateful that during the pandemic, like we were the only place that he could find materials because the Matter oh, Hackers, man. the pro series, Matter Hackers material is, is American made. And we're actually now also making uh, American made resins, um, epoxy free Wonderful. resins and, yeah. and castable dental, you know, all different uh, kinds of resins because that's another part of the industry that, that I, I see there being a lot of traction in right now is the low cost open source resin 3D printing. So I think that's another just kind of interesting thing that we're going to see more and more of is, is options. Um, ah. And what, you know, there's always been options, single, single extruder, dual extruder, independent dual extruder, resins or FDM. And now I think we're going to start to see a little bit more of a diversification and kind of a a worldwide uh, adoption of manufacturers coming from all different countries, including America. Yeah, no, that's an, it's important, and it's good to hear that you're doing that, and a big part of that. That's that's really what we need right now is that local sourcing, and uh, that ability to have that option is huge right now, uh, as we all have felt over this uh, the last like, year and a half inside of the supply chain. Um, that's really great to hear, Mara. I'm really, I'm really excited that that uh, there's more of that going on here in the United States. That's that's good stuff. Yeah. So you were talking about when you got together with Matter Hackers. How long after that was your first Rapid Plus TCT? Oof. Oh, you're making me think about the before times. Um, <laughs> okay, so there was before also. Let me see. Well, I started a matter. I started Matter Hackers in twenty. 15 in March. Okay. I want to say I probably went to my first rapid probably the next year. Right. I don't know yeah. that for sure. Somebody can check that for me, but pretty soon. <laughs> I know I've been I've been to a few rapids and I'm I'm kind of like I don't know. I'm known in the company as the outdoor cat. Like everybody pretty much like stays back and like is doing their, you know, development and, you know, shipping and all the things that Matter Hackers does and I'm the one out there in the world going, what are you guys doing? What do you, how can we work together? What's happening? Sure. You know, I'm the yeah. one that tends to uh, show up at all the shows. So, uh, so I've been to a few. 
yeah, fond fond memories of of Rapid. That's where I remember. That's where I first saw. Um, it's where I first met America Makes and um, did some of their videos that they were doing. I think it was like three years ago. 3D printed fashion, the, like the fashion show that oh, yeah. Joel did um, a few years ago. But just uh, uh, Yulia Kerner um, is who I met there, who she's become, you know, still just a great part of the community. Yeah, such good things. Yeah, it's a great place to get all that uh, community and the networking and see things and actually see the parts, the machines and, and uh, the people around them that make it happen. So uh, yeah. looking forward to doing that. This is a great question for you. And I've been wanting to hear this because I've heard a bit of it with, over the uh, the last year or so talking. Um, your advice for the uh, attracting the younger generations into the new workforce, into additive manufacturing. What would your advice be? My advice is to the adults to just keep making cool stuff <laughs> and sharing yeah. it with your kids, with your friends, kids, share mm. it with your schools, like with your local schools, like reach out to your local school. Like if you made a cool Yoda model, I recently did a, um, just as we were coming out of the pandemic a couple of months ago, we worked with one of our, um, Matter Hackers has a, a program called the Education Ambassadors, which is like K-12 teachers that are super passionate about 3D printing in the classroom and that are basically sharing their expertise with us so that we can share it with teachers that are interested in 3D printing. So if you go to matterhackers.com slash education, you'll get to meet our um, education ambassadors. So we teamed up with Philip 66 and one of our education ambassadors, uh, Jesus Huerta, who's a sixth grade teacher in Calexico. And we did a couple of um, trainings, a couple of like workshops at Boys and Girls awesome. Club here in LA. Cool. And he is such an inspiring educator, but he came in and showed them videos about like the 3D printed houses, for example, right. and 3D printed assistive devices for, for dogs. Mm. And, you know, like some of the things that like, you know, maybe some of us in the industry are like, ah, that's old news or whatever, but like, I mean, the kids were just blown away. And like the the video about the 3D printed houses, not only did it have them asking questions about, you know, well, how how can I do that? Like, that seems cool. That's a robot arm is doing that. Who, how do I, and they had so many questions, but then like it, it ended up being a whole conversation about like the costs of land in, as opposed to the cost of the house and like different housing markets and how that works. So, you know, when you just get, I think when you just get a kid excited about something cool, it just opens up so many other avenues of conversation and it just becomes normal, you know, like having a robot do your bidding is just like, yeah, we did that in, you know, fourth grade. So <laughs> keep making cool stuff, share it with young people, reach out to your local schools. Great. That is extraordinary advice. You're absolutely right. Um, you know, it's just the power of example. Um, when I used to, uh, Used to do a lot of community events, still do, uh, where where we actually reach out from everybody from you know your local schools to maybe the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts. I actually, have done events with them to also putting together a three D printed uh, limbs, you know, for um, Enable. So that was a great project. But I'm just bringing that up. There's just been so many colleges, different people that you you go in and you you take for granted what you know and what you've seen. That that you think, oh, it's you know everyone might have already seen it or it's it's you know you mention it too much because you've done it so much but it's amazing you know the different groups of different people that haven't seen it so to, to be, be able to bring those things up to ignite those fires and not take it for granted just because uh, you think everyone has seen something you know it's yeah. a it's a, a, a different um, that that was one thing I learned from doing so many of those I was like you know I, I can't take it for granted that this this group knows what I talked about from the last group I you know I have to make sure that I bring all the information to each time I am actually in front of a group so yeah. um, gr great well, thank uh, you great ways thank to you have so much for, yeah thank yeah. you for doing that in your community and you know it just makes me think like there's there's that side of it but then there's also the like what i think of as more of the workforce development side like sure. we were talking about before the entrepreneurship side and inspiring like another program we did was with a um an organization uh in la called think watts okay and um the city was actually they were giving the organizer uh for think watts this guy named sticks He's like a rapper and community organizer and just amazing human being. And so they reached out and asked if we would 3D print the key to the city. Oh, cool. 
and which was cool, but I wanted it to be kind of more reflective of their community. So I actually found, I reached out and found a, a designer from Watts who designed the key. We then uh, printed it like huge. It was, it was, it's comically huge. We have, we have some photos. <laughs> it's, it's epic. It's pretty awesome. But we 3D printed this key and we're also going to be working with them. So think Watts is opening a STEM lab basically in oh, Watts to work with local corporations to train people that wouldn't normally have access to this kind of training in 3D printing and coding and entrepreneurship and all of it. And so we're gonna be getting them again in uh, cooperation with Philip 66, we're getting them a bunch of 3D printers and material and training to kind of help boost you know, the local community and have that workforce development available you know, hyper locally and for have wow. them to have access to 3D printing. Point being entrepreneurship. When I talk to teachers, you know, who are doing, you know, elementary school or middle school, and they're like, yeah, you know, we've got some 3D printers and I don't know, we teach them Tinkercad. I'm just having them make like cookie cutters. It's nothing major. Some of our biggest, especially through the pandemic, some of our biggest clients who've been purchasing like hundreds of spools of filament are people with Etsy shops mm -hmm. that are literally making cookie cutters. Right. or sewing tools or custom things to hang your espresso scooper on a wall. Yeah, like, just you know, busy making them, yeah. Yeah, all of these things. That's entrepreneurship. Like, especially again, through the pandemic, people were home, they have a bunch of printers at home. They started developing things and throwing them, you know, on Etsy shops. And that's now their business. Yeah. So absolutely. that's something that's something that's accessible as a um, career right. path for yeah. anybody. Yeah, I see a lot of uh, creatives doing that now, and uh, it makes me happy when I hear their stories of how they were sparked into the uh, making of it in the 3D printing world and how that drove them to do it themselves. You know, that they became the solo entrepreneurs making something out of their own passions, and that that's really neat. You see, a, you see a lot of those stories around. Uh, and it's, it's always good to hear another one, you know? <laughs> hey, Mara, this has been wonderful having you here today. Thank you so much for everything that you've been uh, going through and sharing with us. But while we have you here, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Ah, uh, what would I like to share? Thank you so <laughs> much for having oh, me. Yeah, no, um, thank you. This has been great. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, uh, I think there... Some so, uh, still, I think people there's confusion of like, what does Matter Hackers do? Why, like, how can I work with Matter Hackers? So, um, sure. you know, if anybody would like more information about any desktop 3D printers and materials that we mentioned, the metal um, material that we mentioned, um, we actually did a panel of um, Etsy entrepreneurs um, that's yep. that's recorded. So, like, you know, get my email address. I'll email you a link to that panel. Uh, we have information about every different kind of material. So, you know, if I get very excited about the material side of desktop 3D printing, because that's like everything. You know, why have, yeah, why have the video game console if you don't have cool video games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and the materials like of the cool cartridge. video games. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, just I'm all about the community. I'm all about, you know, just just being available, being a contribution. So feel free to reach out with any any questions. Anybody needs help with anything. Perfect. Well, Mara, thank you for being a positive leader and a contributing part of the SME additive manufacturing community. Thanks, Adam.